Hey, hi there. Uh, my name is Cesar, and today I want to share a little project I've been working on lately. It's called Mscreen, and it's a library. It's a Python library to draw to help drawing OpenGL primitives in the Maya viewport. It's uh, the goal is to help technical directors and technical artists so they can use this chat debug algorithms or maybe add you know, open geo hints into his uh, into their tools without having to go deeper into open geo the open geo pipeline and all that stuff so it's very easy to use it's in github it's uh, free but most importantly it's open source it's licensed under the mit license so you basically can do whatever you want with it uh, commercial projects whatever you want there's no there's no limits in that regard. Uh, use at your own risk, of course. Uh, so yeah, here's the readme file. I encourage you to read it. Uh, there's some basic script explaining, you know, like the features, the main features. Uh, there's also, if you click here, uh, some technical documentation. So if you want to extend this library, you understand what's going on under the hood. Uh, you can go through this. Uh, it's more technical, it's more about the code itself and the implementation, but I, I try to do a good job explaining myself. <laughs> I hope I hope I didn't screw up that. So yeah, that's am screen. So instead of me just talking here, uh, I would like to show you how it works and show a little bit of code, like very lightly, but so you, you, you have an idea of what to expect from this. So if, if you go to the repository, if you download this, uh, there's a test folder. And uh, here are all the scripts that I used to test Mscreen. So all the features are somehow reflected in those, those tests. So today I want to go through those uh, with you. So I have Maya here. It's a, yeah, it's an empty scene. And I have my test, my text editor here. So basically what we are going to do is, this is uh, mscreen repository. So I'm going to go to test and go test by test, script by script, uh, showing you the main features, right? So the first one is this one about lines. It's really simple. You basically import mscreen, uh, clear the screen, refresh the viewport so uh, that, uh, well, you see in the viewport like the the, the screen is clear. I have this reload, it's just for debugging purposes, just so if I do any change uh, that gets reflected. Forget about that, you don't need to do that. And then and here's like when the magic goes is to define points, so that's at x, y, z coordinates. It's an, uh, a tuple tap of tuples. <laughs> and you basically say mscreen.draw curve, pass the point, Pass a color if you want, and this return a primitive, a, a curve primitive. So with that primitive, you can do things like rotate it, or move, or scale. Uh, this actually support a uh, transformation. We will get there. But yeah, basically I'm I'm creating here one red square, one green square, one blue square, and I'm rotating them. So Maya, there's nothing there. And if I run this, uh, you can see how we have our OpenGL lines there. I will. So again, this uh, there's nothing in the scene. This is uh, a viewport thing, so there's no nodes involved. Actually, if I do a new scene, uh, this is still there, right? Uh, and you well, basically you can draw lines of different color, widths, and that kind of stuff. An interesting thing is if you interact with Maya geometry, you can see how the depth is preserved. So the line, the blue line goes around the cube in this case. And if you move this, you can see how that intersect the lines. So it's in the same space, right? It's in the 3D space. So well, that's the first example. It's really simple. It's a static curve. Uh, you basically just pass the points and that's it. So I was talking about uh, the transformations, right? Uh, so the next thing I did was 
be able to draw a transform right so in this script i'm doing the same importing clear refresh and then i'm creating 10 uh, transforms and then I'm, uh, I'm assigning 10 random sizes and move them to 10 random positions and then at the end i refresh the the viewport so if i execute this and go back to maya you can see 10 transforms random sizes random positions right it's really it's not a big deal but you, you can do it right so that's about the transforms uh, after that i did something similar with points so in this case same stuff import clear refresh uh, you don't need to do this if you this if you don't want to this is just the so i can run the script over and over again without adding more and more and more primitives to the viewport right so i clear the viewport first but you don't need any of this really so here i'm basically creating 50 points using random colors and using random sizes so basically this is the only important line there <laughs> and that's it right so if i execute this i go to maya you can see my 50 random points uh, with random color and random sizes so that's about points with the simple stuff uh, so the next thing was uh, about uh, linear interpolate we we use linear interpolation a lot in in well 3d maths they call it like that uh, linear algebra stuff so i'm screen in, uh, chips uh, a function for that so here i'm basically uh, uh, taking two random points in the space and i'm creating a curve from position a to position b and then I'm creating 15 points that go, that goes from A to B. So I'm interpolating that. And I'm also interpolating the color. So it goes from light blue to, how do you say that, cyan. And the size is 4. So if I run this, you can see my curve from point A to point B. From, and the color goes from light blue to cyan i guess <laughs> so the thing is you you can do that kind of stuff right cool so after uh, after that uh, uh I, I took a look at bezier interpolation so i implemented a bezier interpolator that uh, it's a recursive so you can have a bezier curve from of different degrees not necessarily uh, cubic or quadratic uh, so in this case i'm using six control points so that would be a fifth i don't know five order i don't know of a sphere and um, each point is random and i'm drawing uh, a linear curve which is the gauge and then i'm, I'm drawing um oh sorry and drawing uh, one point per CV, so one point on each corner. And then I'm drawing a linear curve, which is a cage, and a Vezier curve. So I basically use the same command, but I pass as degree this constant, which is a Vezier curve. And I, when I execute this, Maya, you basically well, I probably need to change my background. Yeah, you can see it there. I hope you can see it. Let me yeah that's maybe it so we have one point per corner and we have this gauge in light gray and this vizier curve uh, of fifth order in blue so again this is there's nothing in the scene if i do a new scene uh, it's still there it's a viewport thing so be aware of that right so that's about interpolation so all this is really good but uh, it's all static right so what about uh, moving this stuff uh, connecting this to Maya nodes so that's the next test uh, so you can basically define a parent uh, set a parent so in this case I'm drawing a, uh, a curve with the shape of a star 
and then I basically set in a parent uh, a new transform node as a parent and then refreshing the screen. So really simple stuff. And if I run this, uh, can I go? Yes. So let me show that and go back to my background. Okay. So that's our star at the origin, but this time I created this transform node. And if I move it, you can see how the, the star moves. So it's kind of interactive, but it's not only translation, it's the entire transformation matrix. So I can also rotate the scale and do all sorts of things. And when I delete the transform, well, this parent relationship just go away, right? So you can parent any OpenGL primitive to, to a transform node, which is kind of cool. And again, it's a viewport thing, so you have to clear the screen if you want to delete that. So that's good. It's, you can move the entire thing, but what about the forming? So in the next example, if I can find it, yes. So here it's a little bit more advanced, but it shows more of the potential. Uh, so basically, I import in, well, I'm screen doing the reload and all that things and then I, I'm defining four points uh, so this is uh, four random points I'm, I'm drawing a cage uh, which is a, uh, a linear curve uh, yeah using those points I'm drawing a Vizier curve using those points and then I'm creating one transform node a major transform node per point Right, and here's the important thing. So each one of these lines, each one of these primitives, you can register a callback. And the callback could be anything. So in this case, I'm registering this uh, function, which basically assign uh, the transformation of the M object, of the Maya node, to the point of the curve. Or not, not transformation, but the translation, as you can see there. And then I refresh the screen. So if I run this in Maya, so we have four points, four random points. But if I go to the to the outliner, now we have uh, four transform nodes, and I can deform both curves using these callbacks. So being a callback means you can pass any function. And you can see that the the performance is is not that bad. It's it's not you know C plus plus, but it's fairly interactive. Uh, uh, but for sure, like if you go crazy with this stuff, it, it will get slow, I guess. But it it's decent. It's it's reasonable. Um, and yeah, so you can do interactive things with curves and vectors and matrices and all that stuff, right? So. There are simple examples, but I think they show the potential. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, go to the repo. I will put the link in the description of this video. And enjoy it. Uh, feel free to contribute, extend the library if you want. Uh, let me know if you do something cool. I would love to know. And yeah, that's it. See you the next time. Bye bye guys.